Hip extension, active and passive range of motion. Our zero position or starting position for this measurement is the lateral midline of the trunk is parallel with the lateral midline of the thigh or the midline of the femur. I'm gonna have you raise your leg up off the table as far as you can go. So this is our active range of motion measurement here. And then we can also measure this passively. So with all of these hip range of motion measurements, we need to deal with the potential for substitution from the pelvis. I like to palpate PSIS as I move into hip extension passively. Uh, one of the substitutions is you can get excessive anterior tilt of the pelvis. So nice thing about being in prone, the table helps to block some of that excessive anterior rotation of the pelvis, but also by monitoring the PSIS right about there, I start to feel the PSIS move superiorly, which indicates that the pelvis is rotating anteriorly. So that's the end of the physiological range of hip extension. I can spring against the barrier. All right, so now that I've determined the physiological end range, I don't have to monitor the pelvis anymore. I just have to make sure that I maintain the hip in this position. So although this is a passive range of motion measurement, I'll sometimes ask the patient to help me hold their hip in this position, so can you hold your leg right there? I never lose contact with the limb, but it just uh, decreases demand on my body a bit by asking the patient to help me hold them in that end range position. So there's end range passive hip extension. Another key concept related to this measurement is when you're moving the hip into extension, you want to make sure that you don't have the knee flexed. If you flex the knee and then extend the hip, that becomes more of a muscle length test for the rectus femoris. So uh, we don't want adaptive shortening or restrictions in the rectus femoris to limit our true hip range of motion measurement. So you want to make sure when you're measuring hip range of motion, You've got the knee fully extended, so the uh, rectus femoris is on slack and not elongated across the hip and the knee.